Also just looks like something you'd find out in like 1970s or like Fallout, you know? This looks like something you would find in Fallout. Amazing. Right, so oftentimes when you're editing outside of your own home, like a portable editing setup, it can get really quite messy. Like if you work on a MacBook like myself, you have like a dongle and then a couple of hard drives sticking out, maybe a macro pad like a Loop Deck or a Loop Deck CT. Yeah, for those scenarios, I really want to create the the editing hub that I built like two years ago again, because that really worked. Like I, I made that thing, I 3D printed it all, and back in the day, I was still working a nine to five. That's specifically what I built it for. It was um, really quite useful. I just plunked it out of my bag, put it on the desk and plugged the screen into it, the uh, ethernet cable, and I was done. I could edit straight away. It's kind of what humans do really, isn't it? Like we collect things and then we realize, oh, we have too much things. So we put it in boxes <laughs> and that's what we're doing today. We, I have too much things and I'm putting it in, inside of a box. Basically, I just started collecting all the things I thought I would need, so the free SSDs, the hubs, the cam link, and the Loop Deck CT, and kind of thought of like a rough layout by, based on like just putting it in place and kind of imagining how you would use it. So initially, I thought like maybe it's worth it to put the SSDs at the bottom and then put the hub at the top so you have easy access to the ports. But in general, I think that would be kind of a hassle because then you can't really take the SSDs out anymore when there's cables in the way and yeah decided on this kind of layout i have a second hub there as well like a smaller u green hub which in the end we didn't really use so i took to the cat and basically found all design from the first like editing hub and basically adjusted that the only thing that could really stay there was the loop deck holder yeah the rest i completely custom designed so in general the whole thing needs to be a little bit smaller started out with the ssd caddies and the way that works is you basically slide them in at the end of it is a USB cable that is stuck in place. So that port just goes straight into the SSD. And that has always worked out really nicely for me, even with the HDDs back in the day, which is quite surprising. So in terms of design, I wanted this one to be a little less complex. Um, basically, I wanted this one to be printed in two components. So we have only one seam there. And that means that when we're printing it, we have a lot more issues with uh, support structures that we have to remove. If I was doing this on the old printer, I'd take that over the approach again, where I'd like, print it in all kinds of different components, like five or six different layers, so we wouldn't have to deal with that support structure. This time though, we're also sending it to PCB way, so I don't have to deal with the support structure removal, and they can kind of do the heavy lifting on this project, which is quite nice. I think I finally figured out a name for these build videos, I'd say. I used to call them build videos, but we can actually like just call them build logs. Uh, just like, you know, devlogs, but yeah. I'll explain like some iterations I went through. So this was the very first one I printed. In general, the tolerances were not good enough, so everything was really quite thin. And I didn't put a cam link in there yet, because I first wanted to test to see if it actually had any potential. As you can see there, it snapped right in half. That's kind of a weak point, but that shouldn't happen. It should be at least like three millimeters thick. So I printed it out again with a Kamlik holder, increased some of the tolerances as well. And in general, I made some gaps here for the SSD caddies to go into. That's so that the support structures are easily removed, which was also an issue I uh, faced on the uh, first iteration there. So at the back here, we also have this you know, place to put the third hub, which at this moment in time, I didn't really realize that that wouldn't work. And in general, the tolerances were not thick enough for that. So it was all like blocking all the cables that needed to go to the SSDs. In general, this design was a complete failure. I couldn't get the support structures out of the cam link holder either. And in the end, I changed up the design so the cam link holder was open and everything did seem to fit. It was quite nice, but here I already figured out that that third USB hub just wouldn't work because I wouldn't have enough ports on the entire device. So, you know, it was a busy week. I had a couple of deadlines then and um, sometimes you need to take it a little bit easy. Also, it was a little bit top heavy. So when you reach to the, you know, over buttons over there, it kind of shifts upwards, which was really annoying. And yeah, I learned a, a, quite a lot from this, this one. Uh, came back a couple of days later, improved the design. As you can see, I uh, increased the tolerances quite a lot. So you know, made it three millimeters thick. 
put in some holes over there that would hold the uh, cables in place for the SSDs. We removed that rear hub which opened up a lot of space and yeah, everything was just a lot more strong. The cam link holder now also you know, has these support structures in place that will prevent it from slipping and went into the device. And I made some gaps there as well for the USB hub and the cam link just because I had this idea that maybe it would overheat if they weren't there. So yeah, you can then also see like the brand names later on in the video, which wasn't my intention, but uh, that's just kind of how it worked out. All right, so if you're enjoying the video so far as well, definitely consider leaving a like or leaving a comment and subscribing. If you like don't subscribe, then you might never see like another one of my videos again because it doesn't like end up in your suggested feed. So if you're even like remotely interested in like build videos and stuff, then definitely consider subscribing. So without really checking it again, I sent it off to PCBWay to be printed by their service and they're also sponsoring this video. So they offer like a variety of services for, you know, prototyping stuff like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, PCB production and assembly, and of course also 3D printing. And I do this with, you know, machines that are far higher quality than we're even able to afford. Basically, I chose two different options. I wanted to print it in PLA and in resin just to see like for future projects, what's the best option there. I and mean, we did this with the 3D printed sunglass video as well. That's a really small item. So I really wanted to check like, okay, what can, what can resin do for us? And I also printed that little, you know, circular dial that goes on the loop deck in aluminium because the loop deck isn't usable without one of those. I don't understand why they didn't design it that way in the first place. Uh, you know, without that dial, I wouldn't edit videos on that thing. No way, <laughs> it just doesn't work. But yeah, that came back a couple of days later and the first one I really took out of the packaging was the PLA version, which already looked really amazing. Like the print quality with PCB is always like really good. But then I took out the resin version and I was sold immediately on that one. So that's also the one that we'll be building out here today. You know, it looks like something you'd buy in the uh, store. Like it looks like a real product. It doesn't look printed at all. And you can see they put in quite a lot of effort into the you know, finishing up process as well. There's a, you know, they sanded it down, they took out all the infill, or not the infill, the uh, support structures, which I'm not sure if that's, I don't know how resin printers work exactly. I'm not sure if they have uh, support structures. They probably do, but everything looks really clean. The only problem I had with it is I'm not used to resin printers and the tolerances seem to be quite a lot better on resin printers because when I print an M5 hull, on my PLI printer, that basically means it threads in there and it sticks in there quite nicely. With resin printers, it dro just drops in because that M5 hole is actually M5, like, like it's actually five millimeters instead of like 4.8 that the, the normal 3D printer would uh, net me. And so basically what I'm saying here is that I kind of screwed up and I'm trying to get around it in a talking head video <laughs> just to make it seem less, less of a problem, but yeah, I, I did make some gaps in the design so that the two sections could be mounted on top of each other. So that worked out fine. It's still usable. But then the cables that would go into the SSDs needed to be held in place with uh, the bolts. And it seems that the bolts wouldn't be threading into the, uh, the resin, then it wouldn't work. And I didn't leave a gap at the bottom for a nut to go into, uh, which I, I thought I did do, but for some reason it wasn't there. So yeah, the cables wouldn't be held in place. And I had to go past with a hot glue gun just to fix that, that issue. Which isn't that big of an issue, but uh, I designed it in a way that if something ever loosened up, you could just take the loop deck out and adjust it. Which with hot glue doesn't really work because if you're on location, something fails, then, you know, chances are you don't have a hot glue gun. And uh, in that regard, yeah, I'm kind of sad that I didn't really think of this. Yep, burn the sh** out of my finger. Okay, now. The other issue I ran into was that the dial that we printed for the loop deck was a little too tight, so it didn't fit over it initially. Now, luckily, we printed it in aluminium, which is quite soft over metal. Uh, you basically go past it with a standing knife and, you know, scrape off some of the interior, which did take a little while but eventually that also went on it quite nicely. Once it's all together, it really looks like something you'd find out and like fold out. 
it, it doesn't quite look like the thing that you'd find on the arm, but it does look like something you'd, you know, plug into a door to open the door or something. Uh, the, the first version also somewhat looked like that, and I quite like it as well. But yeah, it, it's amazing. It's um, it looks like a real product. It actually works as well. So you have three SSDs there. As I said, one is for a backup, and the other one is to hold all the assets. They just plug in real quickly, and when you get home, you can just take them out and plug them into whatever PC you're working at at home. The loop deck is at a nice angle to where it's like quite comfortable to hold. You could always add like a re like a little pad there to hold up your palm, make it a little bit more comfortable. But in general, everything is nice and visible. The only thing I'm still a little bit worried about is that that cable from the loop deck is quite exposed. So when you throw this in a backpack, I usually just take the cable out. Uh, but Generally, I don't like doing that because after a while the plug might break, you know, so preferably in the future I would like to keep it plugged in and have some kind of support structure in place there. It works out quite nicely not only as an editing hub, but also, you know, because that cam link is there, you can quickly like plug in a camera as maybe a webcam for a meeting, like an online meeting in your wallet to look a little bit better or just as a, as a live streaming device because you also have the loop deck there to do certain things but there isn't like a second input there so you can't really use it as a switch or anything but if you have any ideas for you know what this could be useful for definitely let me know in the comments